Who gets a terrible sleep? Who wakes up during the night and who finds it hard to fall asleep? I used to. I used to wake up feeling like I hadn't been to sleep, exhausted, hungover, even though I hadn't had a drink. See, I used to wake up feeling really tired, exhausted, like I hadn't actually even been to sleep and I'd be pretty tired all day and then come maybe nine o'clock at night, I'd find that I was wide awake. That's probably when I'd start my housework, I suddenly got a, a boost of energy. Um, and then of course I'd go to bed late and I'd wake up feeling tired again, so I got stuck in this really negative cycle. So I thought I would talk to you a bit about how to improve your sleep. Um, there's not one quick fix that will sort it out, it's a combination of lots of different lifestyle changes that you can make. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about, well, what's the issue if you don't sleep? What impact can that have on your life and on your health? So there's a lot of areas that can impact. So poor focus, you know what it's like if you're tired, you can't really concentrate on what you're doing. So poor focus, lack of attention, it can affect your memory, your ability to focus on things and remember them. If you're tired, it's quite hard to be motivated. So low motivation, it can contribute to anxiety and to depression. It can lead to obesity, um, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes. It can help, not help, it can impact hormone regulation and just generally poor health because actually we get significant and major repair to our cells and to our organs during sleep. And actually it's really important that you sleep between the hours of 10.30 p.m. and 2.30 a.m. because this is when you get essential and vital repair to your body. If you miss sleeping within these hours, you're missing out on that repair to your body and that can impact your overall health, but also increase and accelerate aging over time. There's lots of reasons to get a good, solid, deep sleep as well as a significant number of hours. So actually they recommend between seven and nine hours for people between, I think it's age 24 and 64, something like that. So seven to nine hours sleep. How many hours sleep do you tend to get on average? Give me a number below. I reckon I get around seven hours sleep. And I feel great on that. Whereas before I could have nine hours sleep and wake up feeling tired. So how many hours sleep do you get? Next, I'm gonna give you lots of tips on how you can improve your sleep. So number one is stress reduction because you've got two things in your back around here. I mention these all the time, they're called adrenals and they are responsible for firing out hormones all day, all day to manage your stress. So it's called um, adrenaline and cortisol. So if you feel stressed, then your cortisol level goes up in order to counter that stress and then it should come back down. But where we are often in constant stress, so you know, you're trying to get the kids to, to school, you're trying to get to work, there's a lot of washing to do, you've got to get the food in, just a constant state of stress. This can lead to elevated levels of cortisol. And over time, that can mean that your adrenals aren't able to regulate your stress levels in the way that they once were. So your cortisol level should be high first thing in the morning, and then throughout the day, they reduce. So come bedtime, you feel quite sleepy. However, you know, I mentioned that I would wake up tired and then 9 p.m. ish I would come wide awake. That's because I was in a constant state of stress. My adrenals had become dysfunctional in terms of regulating my stress and my cortisol wasn't working in the way that it should have done. So I'd wake up in the morning and my cortisol was low, which is why I'd feel tired. And then come 9 p.m. or around that time, my cortisol would spike and become high, which is why I suddenly became wide awake. So it's important to remove stress from your lifestyle in order to help your um, adrenals regulate your stress properly and stop it affecting your sleep. Okay, so stress reduction in life because it impacts your stress hormones and that stress hormone can wake you up and make throughout the night, but also make you more alert and wide awake in the evenings. So that cortisol is a hormone. So if you've got one hormone out of place, then it can knock all your other hormones out of place as well. So you, it's important to get your hormones regulated. So another way that you can improve your sleep is to eat a diet that supports hormone regulation. So keep away from sugar and lots of whole real foods, including lots of leafy green vegetables, which helps your liver to detox and get rid of any excess hormones that you might have in your body. So eat a diet that supports hormone regulation. 
stress reduction, a diet that supports hormone regulation. Routine, this is one of the big ones for me. So the body really likes routine. It likes to have food at the same time and it likes to go to sleep and wake up at the same time. So it's good to have a, a bedtime sleep pattern and also a wake up sleep pattern. So I like to go to bed around 11 o'clock and get up at six o'clock, maybe 6.30. And I try to do that every day, even at the weekend, because I know that, you know, you might be tempted to have a line at the weekend, but actually my body feels better generally if I'm in a regular sleep and wake up pattern. Next on my list is to get daylight every day. I mean, I work at home, so I could easily go a day without going outside. It could be done easily, but it's really important to get daylight. If you wear glasses, it's important to get natural sunlight into your eyes for at least 10 minutes per day. So if you're out and about, take your glasses off for maybe 10 minutes and allow that natural sunlight to, to get into your eyes because that will help your circadian rhythm, which is your kind of wake and sleep cycles. Combined with that is getting fresh air, you know, get some deep lungfuls full of fresh air because it's only going to benefit your body. And you know what, you remember when you say the kids, take them to the park, get them out of the fresh air because it will knock them out. Well, you know, that doesn't stop just because you're an adult. So get out there and get some fresh air. Movement. So exercise. You know, it's good to get exercise every day to tire out your body, but don't do um, high intensity exercise right before bed because exercise, I mentioned cortisol earlier to do with your adrenals, exercise heightens cortisol and this is going to wake you up before bedtime. So if you are going to do exercise late into the evening, I suggest you actually do something more like yoga or pilates, something a bit more gentle, maybe some stretches or some weights, but that kind of high intensity cardio exercise is only going to increase cortisol levels and therefore make you more awake. So no caffeine after midday because these stimulate you um, and in particular your adrenals. So if you are going to drink caffeine, I've been caffeine free for four years and I don't plan to go back to it. But if you are going to drink caffeine, I suggest that you have a cut off somewhere around the midday point so that it's not affecting your sleep. Turn your TV and your phone off an hour before bed and dim the lights because your phone and your TV emit blue light. These amber glasses help to get rid of the blue light. And actually it makes a huge difference. You can really see how blue the light is. So you can put these on up to two hours before bed to block the blue light coming through, which will improve your sleep because it helps to increase melatonin, which is the hormone that helps us get sleepy and stay asleep. So you can invest in a pair of amber glasses to improve your sleep. The other thing you can do to reduce I brought all my props with me this evening. The other thing you can do to um, reduce the blue light, so I like to listen to my TV before I go to bed, but I put on Friends. I've done that every night for as long as I can remember because it's a program that I don't need to watch. If it was something that I'd not seen before, I would be tempted to watch the program, to listen to what's going on. I'd be distracted and that would stop me falling asleep. So I personally like to put on my Friends uh, series before I go to sleep, but I don't even change the, um, the episode that I'm watching for months on end because I literally see one or two minutes before I fall asleep. But I don't want the blue light from that TV screen affecting my sleep, so I put on my sleep mask. So get yourself one of these, one that blocks out the light. It's really soft, this one is silk, so it doesn't feel uncomfortable at all. I'd highly recommend getting one of these. I wear it every single night. Turn your TV and lights off an hour before bed and keep lights dim. You can use amber glasses to reduce the blue glare. If you are listening to TV before you go to bed, you can put a night mask on to block out the light. Get one that's comfortable. Um, and watch a program. If you're going to watch a program um, or listen to a program, watch one that you aren't tempted to actually watch. Something you've watched before maybe so that you can just use it as a comforting noise but not something that's going to, to stimulate your brain. Now, my next point is to save your bed for sex and sleep only. So some people, like me, you know, I work from home, you could be tempted to do some work from your bed. But actually, I would encourage you to work elsewhere in your house and to keep your bed for sex and sleep only. They're the only two activities I'd encourage you to do in your bedroom. Uh, and on the note of your bedroom, it's really important to have like a comforting environment. So. Me personally, my room is all white and grey. It's kind of very pure and very clean. And I did that deliberately because I wanted something that felt very fresh and very clean. 
if my bedroom was messy and I had, say, piles of clothes um, stacking up in my bedroom, I would find that really quite distracting and off-putting to go to sleep because I'd be thinking, oh, I need to put that away. Or, you know, it'd be bothering me. So for me, it's really important to have um, a room that is conducive to sleep. So have a room that you like the look of. Um, have a room that's clean, that's tidy, that's simple, that's not kind of overbearing. Make sure the room isn't too hot. Make sure that it's not too cold. If it's noisy, get yourself some earplugs. But just really think about your sleeping environment. Next up on the list is deep breathing. I find if I do three or four deep and slow breaths in and out before I go to sleep, that it really helps just to set me off. And I, I literally I fall asleep in, in seconds after that. So you could think about some deep breathing. You might want to do a bit of meditation before bed. You could listen to some meditation, a guided meditation before you go to sleep. Or maybe you like, might like to listen to you know, waves crashing or jungle noises or something that's kind of soothing for you and to send you off to sleep. You could read a book, but as I mentioned about the TV, don't read something that's stimulating. So if it's kind of crime or anticipation, again, this might get the old grey matter going. So I'd suggest that you read something soft and gentle and that's not going to get you on hyper alert before you go to sleep. I like to have a bath before I go to bed. So, oh, I forgot to write this one down, actually. Let me put this down before I forget. I like to have a bath before bed because it's kind of relaxing, isn't it? I sit there for 20 minutes and just kind of chill out. I might put on an audio book or a bit of music. Sometimes I turn the lights off all together and put a few candles on. It's just very relaxing and very calming. But the reason I sit in a bath for 20 minutes is because I put Epsom bath salts in there. And these help to replenish um, magnesium levels. And magnesium is a muscle relaxant and it can help with anxiety. It's, it's calming. Um, but also it helps you to, to detox. It's just a very um, calming way to end the day as well as cleanse your body. So Epsom salts, and you can add to that some essential oils. I like to add lavender because lavender, again, is very relaxing and very calming. So for me, I like to have a bath before bed a couple of times a week. Try to avoid sugar in the evenings because this is a stimulant, same as caffeine. So you want to avoid having sugar probably from like lunchtime, mid-afternoon, really, because it's only going to wake you up and stimulate it. So if you are going to eat it, have it earlier in the day. So I'm gonna recap on my top tips for improving your sleep and then I'm gonna talk you through my bedtime routine. So, stress reduction because it impacts your cortisol levels, which is a hormone. Have a diet that is conducive to hormone regulation. So whole foods, no press food, processed foods, foods as close to its natural state as possible, low sugar and lots of leafy green vegetables to help your liver to detox any extra hormones that might be in your system. The body likes to have routine. It likes to go to sleep at the same time. It likes to wake up at the same time. It likes to eat at the same time. So I suggest that you have a set bedtime and wake up time, uh, even on the weekends, because you'll feel better for it in the long run. Get out and get daylight every single day. If you wear glasses, take your glasses off for 10 minutes and get direct sunlight for 10 minutes. I'm not to say to stare at the sun, you know, but even in this weather where the sun is not as bright, get out there and get 10 minutes of natural sunlight every single day. And whilst you're out there, take in some deep breaths and get some fresh air into your system because this too is gonna to help you get some sleep. Move every day. That could be a walk, it could be some exercise. If it's high cardio, high intensity exercise, do that earlier in the day. Don't do that in the evening because again, it is going to increase your cortisol levels, which is going to wake you up and make you more alert. And of course, dysregulate your hormones in general. So keep any high intensity activity to earlier in the day. Turn off your TV at least an hour before bed um, and or get yourself some of these amber glasses in order to get rid of that blue light which keeps you awake and um, dim any lights. So amber glasses, turn off your TV. If you are going to listen to the TV to help you fall off to sleep, get yourself an eye mask so that you're blocking out that blue light because that stimulates you and keeps you awake. Also, again, if you're gonna watch TV, try and go for something that you have already seen and that you're not tempted to kind of stay awake and watch and see what's going on. Keep your bed for sex and sleep only. Keep your any work that you might do in your bedroom out of the bedroom, go and do it elsewhere in the house, just sex and sleep in your bedroom. 
Make sure that your bedroom is a comforting environment, so a comfortable bed, bed sheets that feel nice, make sure it's not too bright, make sure it's not too hot, make sure it's not too cold. And you know, me personally, if it was a messy room, if I had piles of clothes stacking up, that would make me think, oh, I need to do that, I need to do that, and I'd find it quite hard to switch off. So make sure your bedroom is a conducive environment. You can think about doing some deep breathing before you go to bed, so slow and deep inhales in and out, Maybe you want to do some meditation. You could play a guided meditation before you go to sleep. Um, you could read a book, but like the TV, nothing too stimulating. So something kind of calm and just warm and fuzzy that's going to help slow you down. Um, you can have a bath because it's um, warming, it's gentle, you're sitting still, you're not moving around. You could add some Epsom bath salts to that because that helps to replenish magnesium levels and magnesium is a relaxant for your muscles and helps to reduce anxiety as well. Um, avoid sugar for several hours before bed, like caffeine, try and have it in the first half of the day and not late into the evening because it's a stimulant. And um, essential oils, I didn't mention that, but essential oils, lavender in particular, is good for increasing melatonin levels in the body and melatonin is the hormone that helps sleep regulation, helps you to feel sleepy. So lavender essential oil is one you could add to the bath or like me, you could rub it in your feet before bed. They say that kids need like seven signs to bed. So that would be things like having a bath, putting their pajamas on, brushing their teeth, having a story, turning their lights out. So several signs um, to get yourself to realize that you're going to sleep. So I think I'm an adult, um, but I still need those signals to my brain that it's coming up to bedtime. And I find, I think this is the thing that really helps me to get a deep sleep is that I'm giving my body, my mind, these signals that bedtime is coming up. So my bedtime routine is to have a bath or a shower and then I will uh, wash my face. I like to put oil on my face. I will then brush my teeth. I will then go in to get my phone. I'll set my alarm and I put it out in the hallway because I don't want that kind of energy coming off of my phone but also any noise coming off my phone or any blue light. So I actually charge mine in the hallway which means that come the morning when my alarm goes off I have to get out of bed to turn it off. Um, so that's to stop me oversleeping as well. So I put my phone in the hallway then I get into bed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I like to put friends on because it's something that I've heard many, many times. I don't need to stay awake to watch it. I will set my timer for 30 minutes so that after 30 minutes it goes off. I actually watch about, sorry, listen to about two minutes of it and then I fall asleep, um, which is why I don't change it for months on end. Then I like to put my eye mask on my head, ready for when I'm gonna go to sleep. I like to rub essential oils, so I use geranium because it's good for my uh, thyroid, so I rub it on my throat, along with some clary sage, which is good for hormone regulation. And then I like to put lavender oil on my hands, so I'll put it in here and I'll take some deep inhales um, and get that into my system. Then I rub it on my feet. And the reason for rubbing it on my feet is that that's where we absorb very quickly. And I find that the lavender oil really helps me to go into that deep sleep. It's very calming, it's very relaxing. And as I mentioned earlier, it helps to increase melatonin levels, which is the hormone which helps you to feel sleepy. And um, so after I have done my essential oils, inhaled and put them on my feet and on my thyroid, I like to do my gratitude jar. So I take out one of my bits of paper and I will write on there at least three things that I am grateful for that day because I think it's a great way to end the day. And then I will do my affirmations. So I will say affirmations to address certain things in my life and to change my thoughts to the way that I want to change them. So for example, I might say something like, which one should I read out to? Ah, the cells and tissues of my thyroid are fully functional because I have a thyroid condition. So I will say things like that or um, I am successful. I might say... Um, I have no regrets, I am enough, I love myself. So I work through different affirmations um, over a number of weeks, but I like to do affirmations right before I go to bed. Then I turn off my little Himalayan salt lamp and I put my head on the pillow and the next thing I know, I'm out like, like gone, absolutely gone. Um, I don't remember watching or listening to any of friends, I'm just completely and utterly gone. And they are my signals to my mind and to my body that bedtime is coming up and it seems to work really effectively and I just, I'm knocked out. And then I don't wake up to the morning. That's it, I'm gone. Um, so yeah, they're my tips for a good night sleep. Okay, so that is my top tips for sleep. I shall wish you a wonderful evening and a fantastic night's sleep. See you later.